Hello, we're going to do chapter 12.1 and point three. On the first PowerPoint you have, it, that is chapter 12.1. So hopefully you've printed it off and probably three slides to a page and that way you've got plenty of space for your notes. In chapter 12.1, we are going to talk about contingency tables and we're going to be using the chi-square distribution. And then in chapter 12.3, which will be another video, we will talk about the chi-square test of independence. Both of them use the chi-square. Okay. We're going to do the goodness of fit test. And in this test, we're going to be using a contingency table. It is a one-sided test. The chi-square test is a one-sided test. The distribution does have two tails on it. It's right skewed, so you've got a longer tail on the right-hand side, but it is a one-sided test, although it's a two-sided distribution. So the chi-square distribution, again, is what we're going to use. Now, uh, we are going to be testing in the chi-square goodness of fit test, we're going to be testing proportions. And proportions are denoted by pi. Pi is the Greek symbol, and then the English is P bar. So the null hypothesis, which we'll get to in a few minutes, is going to be noted in terms of pi, the Greek symbol, and then the test we will use from the sample will be p bar. Now for example, in a pro we might be testing a proportion, or two, I'm sorry, two proportions against each other, something like this. The proportion or the percent of people who come in a gas station who buy gas and then the second proportion might be the p percentage of people who come in the gas station who buy items from the store. I heard a speaker once a few years ago who owned a, a chain of gas stations who said that when they first went from selling gas to also selling items within the store that they thought the sales would go down because people would be taking up the spots next to the gas tank, gas um, station where you fill up the gas. But they actually found that sales increased because people went into the store and bought goods in the store as well as buying the gas. So pi one again might be from the population the percentage of people who buy gas at the gas station. Pi two might be the percentage of people who buy goods from inside the store at the gas station. And we will be comparing in our tests, we'll be comparing two proportions, just two proportions uh, in this test is what we compare. Oh, I'll get it. Now, let's, let's suppose, and we're going to fill in the numbers in a couple slides from now. Let's suppose that we are going to be testing the proportion of females who are left-handed against the proportion of males who are left-handed. So we are going to have a column for the females and the males, and then we're going to have rows for the left-handed and for the right-handed. And we're going to fill in the numbers in this table and then we're going to be able to determine proportions in a minute. Okay, so let's say that n sub 1 is 120. And n sub 1 is the number of females. 
the number of females in our sample. So that's going to be a column total, which we'll see in a second. N sub 2 is the number of males in the sample. Again, the second column, the total will be 180. So some number of females out of the 120 are going to be left-handed and some will be right-handed. And the same with the males. Out of the 180, some will be left-handed and some will be right-handed. The total N, then, is N1 plus N2. So in our case, that's going to be 300. And let's say that out of our sample of 120 females, we find that 12 are left-handed. Out of our sample of 180 males, we find that 24 are left-handed. So with that information on this slide, let's go ahead and fill in the table, which is on the next slide. So, let's see. We said that the females, we had a sample of 120. So N sub 1, we said a minute ago, was 120. N sub 2 equals 180. And then N equals 300. So N plus 1, I'm sorry, N sub 1 plus N sub 2 equals N. And so this adds across. Now, we find when we do our sample that out of the 120 females, as we mentioned, 12 of them were left-handed. So then the rest are right-handed. So armed with the 12 and 120, we can fill in the 108. In the male column, we have a similar situation. We've got 180 males, and out of those, 24 are left-handed. So, if we know those numbers, the whole rest of the table can be filled in. 120 plus 180 is 300, and then out of 120 females, 12 are left-handed, so the rest, 108, are right-handed. Out of 180 males, 24 are left-handed, so the rest, 156, are right-handed. Then we can add across the total number of left-handed people out of 300 in the sample, 36. And then the right-handed people, 108 plus 156 is 264. Now, the, the 36, we're interested in the left-handed people. 36 is going to be denoted as X. Then, as we said, 300 is N, so 264 is N minus X. That's how you fill in uh, this table. Let's look at the null hypothesis for this test. We are going to state the null hypothesis in terms of pi, which is the Greek symbol for the proportion. We're going to have pi sub 1 and pi sub 2, where pi sub 1 represents the proportion of females who are left-handed out of the females. And pi sub 2 is the proportion of males who are left-handed, again, out of just the males. So 